Now, the issue of homelessness was uh, brought back into focus in the spotlight last week after two men who had been rough sleeping were found dead. The Peter McVeary Trust and National Housing and Homeless Charity are desperately trying to tackle the problem. Now, Sybil Mulcahy recently travelled to meet 21-year-old David to hear how the Trust have helped him. In October, 8,492 people were registered as homeless in Ireland. That's an increase of 20% on this time last year. But the Peter McVeary Trust is trying to tackle this problem, and last year they placed 98 people in their own homes. Today we're going to meet a man who has benefited from the services of the Peter McVeary Trust, and his name is David. It's huge. Like the, the, the quality in here, whatever was, the work was done in here, it was great. Okay. Will I show you the kitchen? Yeah, cool. Show you the kitchen. This is where all the fabulous meals get cooked. Yeah. Lovely, it's spacious, and it's my, it's my house. <laughs> yeah. Very happy about that. I couldn't be any more happier than to get this place. It was like a, it was like, it was like a dream, do you know what I mean? Just to get something like this. I can imagine. You're here about five months, is it? Yeah, I'm here about five months now. And the day that you got the news that you were getting a place? Yeah, it was a, it was a big shock. It was very, I was hyper name basically. <laughs> and where were you at the time? Like, give, give us a bit of a background to how you ended up here. Um, I was in the St. Catherine's foyer. It's, uh, it's for young people that are homeless. And I was there for two, over two years. Nearly two, about two years, yeah. And they uh, they kept me there. It was a 24-hour hostel, so I had my own room. So I was there two years, and then this. <laughs> and how did you end up homeless in the first place? Um, I was in care, and I they didn't have a placement for me when I left. And uh, I ended up in, I ended up on the streets. So it's strange to even have this. Do you know what I mean? I still wake up thinking sometimes I'm going to lose this. Really? Yeah. But you have it now, this is yours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Looking back, you know, how did it impact you being on the streets? I was more for it basically. It was, uh, it was more or less like it was an embarrassment to tell anybody I knew. Especially my friends. And how did being homeless impact on your mental well-being? Um, I became very depressed. I, I felt like nobody nobody cared. So when you're in when you're in that place it's 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 it feels like the fall wa walls are closing in on you. Because I just felt like I was never going to leave. And what's the plan now for the future? Um I just finished a security course so I'm gonna I'm gonna go from that and I got two distinctions in it, so I'm gonna go and do bar I'm gonna try to do bar training as well and then go on to do event management. Cool. So I want to kind of round off everything. This is my, this is my chance here that, that I'm not going to mess up at all. Well, what would you say about the Peter McVeary Trust? It just it puts a whole spin on life to know that there is people out there that actually support you. You know what I mean? If, if you just allow them to. So final question, mm -hmm. 2018. Yeah, that's going to be, that's going to be some year. We're joined now by the CEO of uh, the Peter McVeary Trust, Pat Doyle, and Uno Hagen from Mars Pharmacy to talk about uh, a new campaign. Good morning to you both. Uh, Una, morning, if you'll excuse me, I, I'll go to Pat first of all. Yeah. So many of us see people lying in shopways mm -hmm. and we make judgments. And when you look at David's story, no child ends up in care through their fault. Exactly. It happens to them, right? The system is supposed to take care of them and hopefully send them off out into the world capable of standing in their own two feet and dealing with us. Mm -hmm. As you heard from him, he came out of care, he had nowhere to go, nothing to do. There no place except the streets. So he's been failed all the way along, and then when he got out, he was failed again. And I, I, I don't know how anybody else felt watching that, but I felt very guilty about how we do business in this country if this is the product. 
Yeah, and I mean, his story there is similar to so many people in St. Catherine's Foyer. That's a special hostel for young people. Uh, there's 35 beds there, and half the beds there, Mark, are made up of kids coming out of care. So we have to do more, obviously, to make sure that we don't fail kids again and again and again. And his feeling there, his reaction about the property, that's a very common feeling. Most of our young people can't believe that they get a property. And if they do manage, and we do manage to get them a home, there's always that fear that they're going to lose us. So it takes a long, it takes a long time for that to ease. And uh, that's our job as well, not just to give the key to the door, but to stay with the young people and to make sure that they, you know, they integrate into life again. Yeah, the, the, I, just my, my feeling was is that everything is stacked against somebody like David. Yeah. I mean, we all have family, thank God, most of us, and we have people to fall back on. Kids in care don't have anybody. They're in there. Um, they were brought in there for their own safety and their protection. So it's organisations like the Trust and Focus Ireland and understand they have to stay with those young people. And our, our, our next goal now is to make mm. sure that he gets that job and that he fully enters back in and that he never loses his home. Because he, if he does, he can't mm. ring family. He goes back into the Next homes. time I hear somebody say, oh, it's their fault, or they did it to themselves, or they let it happen to themselves, yeah. I... I think I'll feel like hitting them yeah, when, no. I, when I see something like that. I know that's not the right answer. Yeah, that's yeah, not the way we should be talking about it. But yeah. t t tell us about um, St Agatha's in particular, because that's one of your, your, uh, your, your big successes. It this is, was lying it. derelict for years, wasn't lying it? Lying derelict for years. It was planned to be demolished uh, by the council. They were going to build uh, a, a, a different type of property on it. The economy collapsed. The site was left idle for 10 to 15 years. It became a dumping ground. Um, illegal dumping, people you know, using it as a drug haven. Um, and we were asked by Dublin City Council, would, in partnership with them, would we look at it? And we, we did, we looked at it, and we came back with sketches. And so it was an old, typical Dublin City kind of complex for old people. And uh, you know, eight on the top and eight on the bottom. And we combined them to make them into big apartments there. So we've four on the top, four on the bottom, and we built three new apartments. So 11 new households moved in there last summer. 11 people out of homelessness for good key to the door, no more going back to homelessness. So a fantastic story. 1.4 million funded through the state, through Dublin City Council, um, and we'll be the landlord there supporting people indefinitely. So we're delighted. And you have a list of that type of properties uh, all over Dublin, and Absolutely. I'm sure in other parts of the country as well, yeah, but Limerick. particularly in, 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 in Dublin, that, are, that you've identified and that you could get your hands on if you got the money to go and do that with. Absolutely. I think we've 99 different properties in the pipeline and uh, we're looking for as much support as possible and Una and, uh, and, and her fabulous ideas uh, will help on that as well. It, it cost about uh, 7000 to kit the inside of a unit out like that. You saw there, they're fully furnished because people coming out of care, kids coming out of care, like they don't have family to buy them the toaster or to buy them the kettle. We have to provide all of that. So all the funding that we, uh, you know, that we raise through uh, great initiatives like this will go to kidding out lovely apartments. Like that. Well, you, you mentioned it. Let's bring uh, Una in. Uh, Una Huygen, a, a very impressive uh, woman, has to be said. Entrepreneur of the Year, year uh, 2016? Yeah, that was Image Magazine. Image Entrepreneur, Magazine, yeah, okay. Last year, yeah. You're, you're a pharmacist or you run a pharmacy business? Yeah, I'm a pharmacist for profession. Mars. Mars Pharmacy, yeah. We have eight Who? stores in Dublin and an online store, mars.ie. And, um, and well, why? I mean, when you see a piece like yeah. that about David, it's kind of hard not to get involved. Yeah. But why did you? I mean, you why did we get involved? Well, it's a long story, Mark. But um, I suppose it starts with um, our eight locations, particularly Bagot Street and the Rannell area. And you mentioned that unfortunate gentleman who passed away last week. He was camping out in a tent behind Gonzaga College, and around our locations, we have a lot of homeless people, and we would know them well. And you're right, people make assumptions and they say that it's their fault or they've fallen into addiction or, you know, but actually everybody has a story. It could be anybody's son, anybody's daughter, anybody's sister, brother. Um, we know a lot of them well and by name. We were just talking, Pat, earlier mm. about a few people around the Baggage Street probably area. probably had a few of them in your doorways. We, well, listen, we, we have them in every day, you know, because they come in and they swap their change for, for notes. Um, so we know them well. You know, they're people like just my, like me or you, uh, Mark. They've just fallen into an unfortunate situation, and a lot of it is not to do with their. It's not their fault at all. Okay, so th you decided you wanted to get involved, yes. and um, this campaign th th it was run last year. I think it raised about twenty five thousand. But you you're aiming to double that this year. Yeah, this last year what we were doing is I I I met somebody. I met a, a, a lady. I, I met her on the street. She had three children with her, and her daughter was crying, saying, "Mommy, don't please don't cry, please don't cry." And I went over and spoke to her and I found out exactly what had happened. She had lost 
lost her house because the landlord put up the rent and she found herself on the street. And I got into the car after that, Mark, and I bawled crying. I did not know what to do. And I thought, something has to be done here. But I, like everybody else, have seen this and walked past people for years and didn't know how to help because you don't know if giving money is the right thing to do or not. And as soon as I turned on the car, Peter was on the radio and he was talking about solutions. And that's what I love about Peter McFerry Trust. They don't talk about, they don't try and hammer anybody or they don't talk about the feelings, they talk about the solutions. And I phoned a friend of mine, Derville, and I said, do you have Peter's number? Because she seems to have everybody's number in Dublin. And she did. And I rang him and I said, Peter, you don't know me, but I'm coming to see you tomorrow. And I went in to see him and it is, it, it is, it, it's not possible to not You know, get once he gets hold of you, he has you for life. You do, you do like realise that, don't saint. you? He's like a walking saint. He's got an aura. And so what we set up last year was basically to try and get people a temporary accommodation mm. because there were so many people going in and out of hostels. And that's why we called it Wrap for Homeless last year. But this year, we know, especially talking to Peter and working with the guys in Peter McFerry Trust, the solution to homelessness is homes, Mark. It's a permanent solution. Um, and so we're working to double our efforts this year to get, as, as Pat said, it costs 7000 to do up a, you know, a space that they have into a home. So we're trying to get at least seven people, a key to their door, a permanent home, just like David in the video. Like, I mean, who wouldn't want to help? And what we're trying to do is raise awareness using all the connections that we have and all the relationships we have, particularly with influencers, social media influencers, and use social media for a positive thing. Um, so for a positive solution, and we're running this um, market tonight. It's the first of Meeting many events. Meeting House Square. Meeting House Square between 6 and 9 p.m. It's a Christmas market. It's in association with Exposé, the team in Exposé. They've mm -hmm. come on board and fair play to them. And we have, we've asked 18 of our suppliers to come and make donations to Peter McFerry themselves tonight. So they're going to be showcasing their Christmas gifts. You can come along, do a bit of Christmas shopping. All the proceeds, all the money goes to Peter McFerry tonight. Make a donation. So I know you've got, a, you've got euros in. nearly a hundred staff working for you, and uh, a, a good number of them are going to go and sleep out on um... Friday night. We're sleeping out on Baggett Street just to raise awareness of this, you know, because we all walk past people, Mark, every day, and we look. And we make judgment. We do. We uh, don't see people as people. So we're raising And we have failed them by our silence or by Absolutely. our inaction. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, let's try so, and make sure that we don't fail them again. Yeah, so people can come on board. They can visit our website, Myers.ie, to see how they can help. There's four ways of helping. You can call into store and make a donation in any of our pharmacies. You can go online. People don't like wrapping your Christmas gifts at mm. Christmas time. You can select to get a gift wrapped, two euros fifty to get a gift wrapped. And all that money goes to Peter and, and this cause. Third is you can donate by text if you're not in Dublin and you don't want to shop, 50300 to make a four euro donation. And for people out there who can actually make a higher donation, and there's lots of people who can afford 10, 20, 50, 100 euro, you can go on to the Mars page on everydayhero.com. Okay, well, listen, we'll leave it there. Uh, also, obviously, Expos are involved with this, and you can get details from their yep. uh, um, Facebook page and also from Mars as well. Yep. Pat, we want to wish you all the very best. Those yep. are wonderful projects, Thanks and I much. hope you take off quite a few off your list of 99 in the, uh, in the coming year. Yeah. Not at all, you're more than welcome. Right, let's take a last look at the news now. Here's Geraldine Lina.